Hello guys, we continue our journey in Laravel multi-language models and today I have a part 3 of the series where I will explain two different packages how to manage Laravel translatable models in a separate database table. So in part 2, for those who haven't seen that, I will link that in the description of this video. In the database basically we had this. So every record has title English, full text English and for each of the language there were two database columns basically, so all in one table. And there are two packages that can help you to extract that and it would be easier to add more languages in the future. And let's take a look. The first package is an old one, Astrotomic Laravel Translatable, or you may find that or you may know that in the past by this man, Dim Sav. Dimitris Savopoulos was the original creator of this package back in 2014 I think or 2015. And a few years ago it was taken over by Astrotomic Company, but it's still the same package, just with a bit more fresh look maybe, but it's the same syntax. So basically it allows you to access post title or post translate title by whatever language you want without actually paying attention of what's happening under the hood. So that package takes care of saving the data and getting the data from the structure, which is actually kind of hidden from you. So I've done the installation of that and transformed that example from part two. Visually it looks really similarly. So three languages, also the same form, but the code is different. And what I've done, I've created a separate branch in the same repository that I've shared. The link to the repository is in the description below. And we will go through the pull request changes, what I've changed to make it work. First, the installation part. So compose require, vendor publish, and then you have config file where you can specify all your locales. Which is exactly what I've done. If we look at the pull request from the branch, I have config translatable file with three locales, and we will try to add a fourth in a minute. But first, let's get familiar with how the package works. So this is the installation process. Then you need to create manually, package doesn't do that for you, a model and a migration for post translations. So I've done it from my terminal with this command and with artisan migrate. In that migration, there are some rules what fields need to appear. So increments, integer foreign key, which is older syntax and I've used Laravel 7, later syntax with foreign ID. So this is my version, so foreign ID to the post. Then locale, which is actually the, the string, en, es, or others. And then all the fields that you need to be translated, they all should be here. And then you add unique index, that there would be only one record with specific record with specific language. So that's migrations. Then in the models, you need to create new model post translation with timestamps, false, and all those fields fillable that you need. And also add some traits into the main post model, which is exactly what I've done. This is a new model that I've created. And model post was changed by using those traits and contracts implements and here and also translated attributes. So a few settings to make the model translatable. And then I needed to transform the form fields to ensure the exact structure that the package needs to have something like this en title and de title with all the locales and then from the request you have to perform the update or create by using request all or request validated in my example. So if we go to resources views posts create blade, this is the changes. So instead of title underscore locale, the syntax is now locale and as an array title and here full text becomes an array element of locale full text. And also I'm changing my app available locales to translatable locales, which is basically doing the same role, but in the config of a package now, not in the main config app. And how do I save that data? We go to store post request, which also needed to be transformed into the same structure. So en title, en full text, and locale title, locale full text. So we transform all the fields to be able to use them in the controller, which wasn't actually changed. So we go to PHP Storm and I can show you post controller. And in the store, we have post create request validated. So this part didn't change. I'm just saving all the data that comes from the validation after form request. And now see how it works. When I fill in the form, fake filler, I save the post and look what happens in the database. So this is our old structure and we have a new post created, but all the field values are null because I'm not providing them, I'm not saving them. Instead, we have a post translations table with ID 12, which saves it in this structure. So locale, title and full text. 
So in the post table, we can totally remove those fields. But of course, before that, please migrate the data if you have the real data. So write some separate migration script for that. But generally, post table becomes much lighter and all the data for the translations comes here. How to get that data? Instead of having post and selecting all the things that I need, we don't need to check whether not null or title or something. There is a specific scope method translated in so you provide only the posts that are translated in that specific locale. And that's it. That's all you need to know. So in the list, we have only one article translated to English, although there are more articles in the posts table, but they are not returned from the query. And in the blade, in the home blade, if we scroll down for each of the posts, we don't need to specify locales here anymore. We just need to use them exactly as they would be in the same posts table. So without extra table. Now let's try to add Italian language, the fourth language. And it is as easy as going to your config and adding that here, Italian. Then what happens? We refresh the page and we see Italian on top because I'm using the locales from new config file. So here in the navigation, I've changed that from my own config to translatable config. Again, if you haven't seen part two of the series, go watch that and it is explained in details there. So now we have Italian and if we go to add new post, Italian is here as well. And then we use fake filler to fill it in. We save the post. And now we have two articles in English and Italian gives us one article. And in the database, we have, if we refresh another post with no values for those translations, because they are all in post translations, including that new Italian value. So the main two benefits of using this package is first, it's easy to add a language, just put the value in the config and also the main posts table becomes very light and all the translations are saved separately. Now, out of curiosity, let's take a look what queries are happening under the hood. So let's install Laravel debug bar. Composer require Barry Laravel debug bar. And that's all we need to know. We don't need to config anything for debug bar. It will just work. And if we refresh that page, at the bottom we will have queries. And let's see what is happening here. So for each of the record, it gets the translations. Actually, let's take a look at English version, more queries. So probably we need to also use eager loading in the home controller. Let's open the home controller. We need to specify with, and that relationship should be post translations. And we haven't created that yet. Or actually I found in the documentation that we can eager load with translation like this. So we don't need post translation as a relationship with translation. And that would be with translation with specific current locale. And let's try it out again with debug bar enabled. And now we have that eager loaded with specific locale with specific IDs for the post. Cool. So if you don't use that package, you have one query for the posts. If you do use that package, you have two queries for the posts list and for all the translations of all the posts that are mentioned. It's not a big deal in terms of performance if you win on the convenience of the translation usage. And another package that I wanted to show you is from well-known company Spati. It's also called Laravel Translatable, but it works in a different way. It doesn't create new tables in the database. Instead, it saves all the things in JSON in the same table. So I've tried to implement it and I went only halfway because personally, I don't like to deal with JSON fields in the database, but that's totally personal preference. And you may like that approach by Spati. So I will demonstrate it to you. Installation, you require Spati package, then you may publish config, but you don't need it. And what you need to do is add to the model has translations, translatable and create those two fields. So again, I've made a pull request. And here's what I have in the model, use has translations and translatable attributes. Then in addition to title EN and full text EN fields, I had to create two new fields. So database migration for title and full text, and they would be JSONs. And also I had to change the create blade schema from title underscore locale to title dot locale because it accepts array and the way to save the translations it's down below. So you can set translation of field, locale and value, or you can do something like this. So translations for the field is array. And then you set translations for the field with array of values. And this is exactly what I did in my controller here. 
in the post controller instead of doing request validated i've created a new post and set the translations to both of those fields and this is the result let's try it out add a new post use the fake filler chrome extension save post and look at the database this is our old values with title en full text en and all of that and here's what is done by spotty package so title is actually a set of json values like this in this structure and all the other fields are the same so you should probably use text and not string or even json field as it stores json structure so you may use table json in laravel migrations if your database supports that so with this package i've stopped here with the demo there will be a pull request in the repository but i didn't want to implement the full thing to get the translations because again personally i don't really like the approach of storing json in the database if you do store json field like mysql json field you can do something like this and perform more json operations i will have links to both of those packages in the description below as well as repository to the main demo project that i've created and if you want more videos or mini series like this one subscribe to the channel like the videos and also support me and my team financially by checking out one of the three products you can see on the screen now and the more money we earn from those products the more time i personally have to shoot these daily videos like this one see you guys in other videos